Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the Radiohead music video Burn the Witch. This video is going to be particularly relevant for you if you are studying OCR A-level media studies. The video will only ever get asked about in terms of media language or representation, so I am going to go through both of those aspects in conjunction with this music video. This whole video is uh, quite unusual. It's made with kind of puppets and stop motion animation. That's really unconventional for a music video. Most music videos often focus on the band or the artists. Um, and to have this kind of very narrative based um, stop motion, almost kind of kids like music video is quite unusual, particularly because the focus and the themes of this are quite dark. And that might tie into Radiohead trying to represent themselves as being a quite alternative, unusual band. The whole video and the style of the animation of the puppets are intertextual references to some old TV programmes such as Camberwick Green and Trumpton. These are programmes that were around in the 1960s, so um, familiar to uh, you know older target audiences who would get these references. But even if you don't get the references, a lot of younger audiences are still going to enjoy the video. There's some quite clear gender stereotypes within the video. You have got, um, you know, the ma male mayor seen in a position of power. You've got men uh, doing pos uh, positions of manual labour, so things like painting and mowing and driving. Um, and you've got men being driven around wearing a suit and a hat, so he's seen as kind of higher class. So lots of men in positions of power and or manual labour, and these are quite traditional representations of men. Whereas by contrast, the women are seen in more domestic representations, so seen uh, cutting flowers, for example, um, cooking and doing more decorative jobs. So kind of creating this binary opposition between men and women within the video. There's lots of hints within the video to themes of violence. So, for example, you have a pub called the Speared Bear Pub. Um, and, you know, there's this idea throughout that if you are picking up on all these little details, you will get the hint that something is wrong. We see the mayor looking at his watch and this kind of creates tension. We're wondering what he's waiting for, what is expected, what is going to happen. On the surface, this village seems quite utopian. It's very colourful. It's very fun. You know, the puppets create that idea of colour and fun. Um, you know, you've got these perfect decorations, lots of flowers, vegetables and things like that. Um, so on the surface, it's a very utopian representation of kind of rural life. You also have lots of hints to the fact that there's something much darker going on in this video. So there's red crosses on the doors, which is quite strange. It might reflect um, some sort of religious or dangerous undertones, something to do with health, maybe. Red crosses often signify health or danger, medical needs. We get a zoom in on the model village and the waving models. And at this point, the tone changes. It feels something, something feels weird and off. We see a seesaw, which seems quite fun on the surface, but then we realise there's something darker going on. Uh, on the wide shot, the chair gets dunked underneath the water. And again, this might act as um, like a historical reference to people who have cultural knowledge. So perhaps some kind of referential cultural code to people who have knowledge of witch trials. Um, you know, several hundred years ago, there were people who um, were put on trial for being witches and their part of their trial was being drowned in a river by being strapped to a chair. So some quite dark undertones as part of this. There's a dancing display, which again on the surface seems quite nice and fun. But then we see that there's a girl tied to a tree and the men are in kind of animal masks that seem quite creepy and animalistic and wild and disturbing and that they've got swords. So again, this idea of contrasting something that on the surface seems nice and then we go deeper and darker and it seems more aggressive and scary. We then see some nice shots of bakery, lots of lovely baked goods on display, a cart of delicious looking goodies. But then we see a close up which reveals blood dripping from a pie um, and we're seeing legs, cow legs coming out of the pie, um, which again is this idea of suddenly seeing something quite dark to do with violence and death. Then we've got a flower display happening and we realise that they're actually decorating a kind of hangman's noose, um, which again, quite scary adult images may again, maybe representing the band as, as tackling some quite difficult and dark issues. And this is all creating enigma for the audience because we're wondering what is going on here in this village. 
This is when we go through the kind of uh, village fate area and we see this very large wrapped item, wrapped in red colour, which immediately connotes danger and is a warning to us. And again, it creates this enigma of what is under there. And when they pull the kind of cloth off and we realise that it is a kind of large wicker character um, and it's a, a very large structure very ominous and this acts as a very clear intertextual reference to the film The Wicker Man. Uh, there are two versions of this film, older and newer, either one would work as a reference um, but yeah a, a, a whole film is based around this idea of a utopian uh, rural place that seems perfect on the outside but is actually very dark and disturbing underneath um, and again a lot of older audiences are going to get that reference. There's actually a lot of references to The Wicker Man throughout the whole music video. You'll notice that there's lots of scenes that I'm showing here side by side uh, from both Burn the Witch and The Wicker Man and you can see the very very clear similarities between them. So um, it's not the, the actual kind of burning part of the wooden structure is not the only reference to this film in the music video. What we get is the waving, which in contrast to the fact that, you know, there's people being burned alive is terrifying. Um, and they all turn to us as the audience and has this direct gaze to us, which is quite scary. And they all wave. And it's this idea of showing something seemingly harmless, just waving. And it seems very terrifying because we know that there's somebody burning to death. The fact that there's no um, images of the band or the, the main singer in this is very unusual. But again, like I said, because Radiohead kind of are part of this um, representation, they often represent themselves as a kind of quirky alternative band. And they're known for doing things that are quite controversial. So uh, it's not perhaps unusual when you consider the band and the kind of genre or subgenre that they are part of. The use of the stop motion and the kids style of puppets very unusual um, for a music video aimed at adults is very strange but it could be to draw in those adult audiences you know don't forget that Radiohead have been around for a very long time as a band and will have a lot of fans who are 30s 40s 50s and over um, and so perhaps using these kind of childhood references to products that they might be familiar with from their youth is quite an interesting way of trying to draw them into the music video and again the same with the Wicker Man reference it's a good way of drawing in audiences who might be familiar with the, that kind of horror film uh, from the 70s. It very much creates this idea that, um, you know, Radiohead are kind of anti-authority, anti-trying to fit in with surface things. They're not there just to be superficial and aesthetically good, pleasing to the eye. It's not about appearances for them. You know, not appearing in their video suggests it's not about appearances. Um, so, you know, perhaps this idea that in the video, the people who try and fit into the village are dangerous. The people who want to be part of a crowd and follow the crowd are are evil uh, and and actually the outsider is the good one even though he dies he is the kind of victim and he is the protagonist so um this idea that radiohead are perhaps positioning themselves with being an outsider somebody who is moving around within dangerous communities so um creating kind of quite political messages um that are quite unconventional in terms of many other genres and, and artists OK, so that is my easy to understand guide to Burn the Witch by Radiohead. Don't forget to hit subscribe to keep updated with a whole load more videos I'm updating in the next few weeks for both AQA, OCR and Educas Media Studies, GCC and A-Level. And if there are any comments or requests for particular videos that you would like that I don't already have, just drop me a comment below and I'll see what I can do.